My five-year-old son asked me to create a police car like flashing light that he can put on top of his Nerf gun while playing around with his mates. Know where his mate? Sounds like a plan to me. Bang! We can sort it. In this tutorial, I'm going to create a police light themed LED flashing circuit using the 555 timer IC. This circuit alternatively flashes between the red and the blue LEDs while blinking each of them individually similar to the police strobe lights. To add some spice to your project, you can also add a police siren to this circuit. However, I just wanted to keep it simple. Watch this video for detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this circuit and for a complete instruction on how this circuit works. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. For this project we need 6 red LEDs, 6 blue LEDs, 2 555 timer ICs, 2 1K resistors, 1 680K resistor, 100K resistor, 1 10 microfarad capacitor and 1 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitor. Depending upon the input voltage and the way you connect the LEDs, either series or parallel, you will have to use different values of resistor in series with your LEDs. Please check out ledcalc.com to calculate the resistor values based on your LED arrangements. Now let's try to understand how this circuit works. The circuit has two parts. Part 1 where the blue and the red LED alternate and flash at a regular interval. Part 2 where a cluster of similar color LEDs flash like a strobe light. In my previous tutorial adjustable single dual LED flasher using 555 timer IC, I showed you guys how to configure 555 timer IC to operate in a A stable mode. In A stable mode the 555 timer IC acts as an oscillator re-triggering itself generating square waves from output pin pin number 3. Later I also showed you guys how to connect two LEDs in opposite polarity at the output pin pin number 3 so that they toggle on and off at regular interval of time. In this tutorial I'm using two copies of the previously shown A stable circuit configured at different frequencies. The first 555 timer IC uses a higher value capacitor and hence it takes more time to toggle the output. The second 555 timer IC uses a lower value capacitor and hence it toggles the output very fast. So pretty much that's exactly what we want. The first 555 timer IC will help us in toggling between the LED clusters and the second 555 timer IC will produce the strobe light effect. Now let's connect the LEDs to this cluster. The first LED cluster of the red LEDs turn on when the anode receives a positive voltage and the cathode is grounded. This happens when the output of the first 555 timer IC is on and at the same time the output of the second 555 timer IC is off. Similarly, the second cluster of blue LEDs turn on only when the output of the first 555 timer IC is off and the output of the second 555 timer IC is on. Now when the first 555 timer IC is on, it turns on the first cluster of red LEDs and they blink at a speed at which the second 555 timer IC oscillates the output. Similarly when the first 555 timer IC turns off, the second cluster of blue LEDs turn on and blink at a speed at which the second 555 timer IC oscillates the output. This cycle continues as long as there is power in the circuit, creating a cool LED flashing effect similar to the flashing light seen on the top of a police car. You can change the frequency of toggling between the successive LED clusters by changing the higher value capacitor. Increasing its value will increase the time between the successive toggling between the two LED clusters and vice versa. Similarly, changing the value of the lower value capacitor will change the blinking rate of the LED clusters. So this is how my board looks like in 2D and 3D. I have placed both ICs and all other electronic components to the middle of the board. To give this assembly a bit nicer look, I have placed the LED clusters on both sides of the board. Alright, now let's start sorting the components to the board. Since I care a lot about my ICs and microcontrollers, I never solder them directly to the board. In case of ICs, I always try to use IC bases or if a base is not available, I use female pin headers. After soldering the IC bases, I'm soldering all the resistances to the board. Next, I'm soldering the capacitors to the board, followed by all the LEDs to the board. I'm also soldering a female micro USB port to power this circuit board. Always check the polarity before soldering the socket to your board. To conclude the setup, I'm installing the ICs to the IC bases. So this is how my final setup looks like. 
do comment and let me know if there are any scope of improvement thanks again for watching this video i hope it helps you if you want to support me you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos thanks see you again in my next video bye now